I'm Natasha Humor, and this is my sister Lana Humor. We are a Think Ahead Kids Foundation. We aim to be inspirational people like you. Welcome, New York Times bestselling author Stacia Deutsch. Hi. Let's begin. <laughs> Can you tell us what books you recently published? So I write a lot. And you know that what is different about what I do is that I usually write books that the publishing houses want or need. So they call me and they ask me what to write whatever they want. So I've done a lot of movie novels. I've done a lot of mystery novels. Recently, I have a series coming out for the Boxcar Children called The Jesse Files. There's four books in that. I think three have now come out. And just last week, I had a ghost, well, a Bigfoot story that came out with a different publisher called Arcadia is the publishing name. And it was, it's called Vashon Island Bigfoot, I think. So is this series about Bigfoot or finding So Bigfoot? it's their series. And what they wanted was me to do like something regional because they sell them regionally. And I wanted to do something about the Pacific Northwest, like the Seattle, Oregon area. Yeah. And my husband is a huge Bigfoot freak. He oh. loves Bigfoot. He knows so much about Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. So it made the research really easy because I'd be like, hey, Jim, how many toes does a Bigfoot have? How deep is a Bigfoot footprint? What does Bigfoot poop look like? And he would just answer it. So I got to tell them a little bit what I wanted to do. And then at the end of this book, they were like, well, we're thinking about doing another one. And my husband was like, did you know there's lizard people who live under Portland? I was like, well, that's weird, but okay. But he is super into that stuff. <laughs> like he loves yeah. those kind of stories. So it made it really easy. Stories, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you ever want to go Bigfoot hunting in the woods, I can set you up. <laughs> What's your, what's your favorite book that you wrote? That I wrote? It's a hard question. So Blast to the Past was my first series. And it's about four kids who time travel and meet famous people in history. And the first person they met was Abraham Lincoln. And the book's getting really old now. I mean, it doesn't change, right? And Abraham Lincoln is the same. Um, but it was the first book I ever wrote and got published. And I wrote it with my friend Rody, and the whole thing was amazing. So in terms of just books that I love, that is the book of my heart. The best book I ever wrote might be different, but Lincoln's Legacy is my favorite book ever that I wrote. You said those were inspired by when you were reading to your children. Mm -hmm. You wanted to write a story about kids traveling in the past. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so they inspired you. Yes, and in fact, the characters are all named after either my children or Wendy's children. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. One of my kids was saying that they were going to write their college essay about what it was like to be in the book. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. kind of fun. But so, well, yeah. Speaking of inspiration, what is the inspiration behind your stories? What stories? All stories? All your stories. Stories come from everywhere. And I know that you both like writing too mm -hmm. and making up stories. And stories can come from anywhere. I sometimes say like, you just have no idea what's going to happen. That's why you got to get out and like go be in the world and see what you see and do what you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a story in my head that I've never written when my son, who is now 27, was like four we were driving somewhere and I, we got there and I unbuckled his seatbelt and all of a sudden he goes, Hey, look, I found a jelly bean on the floor. And I was like, ah, don't eat it. Don't eat it. And then in my head, I was like, what if he did eat it? Like, would he yeah. get superpowers? Like, what? Like, I don't remember putting a jelly bean there. <laughs> so like stories can come from anywhere. Like yeah. anything you do, it's seriously. All around you. All around us. Yes. And if you want to write a story about a kid who finds a jelly bean, you <laughs> Both yeah. gross and cool. Yeah. So do you use a story map or outline when you make yes. your stories? So I know that they say that there's two different kinds of writers. One is called pantsers who write by the seat of their pants. Mm -hmm. And then there's people like me. I use an outline or a story map because I get off track if I don't. Plus, I write a lot of mysteries, and in mysteries, you really have to know who did it, like, as you, you go through to, it. You have to, like, yeah. write about the beginning and the middle and the end because you have to put clues throughout exactly. it to show who did it. That's exactly right. And so, because I write a lot of mysteries, even my things that aren't mysteries are sort of mysteries, um, 
Yeah, so I am a big fan of outlining because if you start without an outline, all of a sudden, like, you're like, oh, it's a romance. I didn't mean for it to be a romance. <laughs> you just, like, go off into some other realm, and I'm very, very clear. Sometimes when I finish the outline, I feel like I'm done, and I should be, like, done with the whole book because I spent so much time doing the outline. Now I'm like, ugh, I don't now, feel like writing it. Now I have to it. write it all. <laughs> yeah, I just want to step on it. Yeah. Like, pop out a book. <laughs> So how many drafts do you go through usually? Um, a lot. It's so hard to define like what makes a draft. Is uh, like, I was just working on a picture book with a friend and I think that we went to version nine, but version nine was probably version one zillion. Yeah. If you count every time I went in and changed a word or a period or a thought or whatever. Yeah. Um, I do try and save, I try to save because, and start a new version every time I sit down at my desk to look at it again, because otherwise you change stuff that sometimes you regret that you changed later. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I knew what I said. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, so probably um, a billion versions, but it may just say number nine on the top. Yeah, because you go through a bunch of different changes when you add stuff, exactly. when you take away stuff. Story I wish I was better at numbering them. So if you have a great idea on how to do that, you let me know because I save them and like somebody will be like, give me the most recent version. And I'm like, oh, good grief, I have no idea. <laughs> Sometimes it's like final version one, final version two, final version 2.1, final version 2.0. <laughs> I'm like, ah, well, so I don't many. Know what I've got. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Yeah. So you come up with something really great and a way to save it and we'll all do it, okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. How do you get to write about movies? Oh, London, I'm so lucky. So the, not the movie company. I like to pretend like I work for the movie company and they're gonna invite me to the red carpet, but they don't. I work for the book company. So a book company will call me and say, hey, we need a movie about, I don't know, uh, Hotel Transylvania. And then they'll send me the script about a year before the movie comes out. And then I have to guess a lot of things. So it might say, let's think about Batman. Um, it might say, I got you, Joker, is the line that Batman says, but I have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea what's going on. So I have to guess. I call it vaguing, like being really vague. Batman said as he ran down the street. And then I just hope, I hope that I'm close. But it's super fun to write a movie novel. So, so, so much fun. Because you gotta put the whole movie into words. Yes. Yeah. I'm taking somebody else's script and I'm turning it into prose. That's what I'm doing. So I'm not writing the story. I'm not adding new scenes. I'm not doing anything. I am just making them a book out of their movie. Mm -hmm. So you have to guess. I do a lot of guessing. And sometimes you don't even know what they look like. Like if I do like Hotel Transylvania or another animated, like, you might not know what the characters even look like because it's a year from now that the movie's going to come out. So you're totally guessing. And then they'll, the publishing house usually right before they publish it, will do one last go through. And then sometimes I'll be like, wow, I didn't, I didn't write that. Or I didn't know that happened because just somebody in the publishing house, an editor usually will go through it one last time with the newest script. And sometimes they won't even bug me with it. They'll just like do it there. And then I'm like, they changed the character's name. That's weird, but okay. <laughs> like, and I'm fine with it. So care. the movie hasn't even come out yet? No, I never do them. They like to put the books out about six weeks before the movie because kids like to buy the books and then watch the movie after. And you have to be really careful that the dialogue is all as right from the script and hope the actors don't change it very much mm -hmm. because kids like to follow along with the book, with the movie. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it can be a little bit tricky. On one of mine, I think it was Rise of the Guardians. Somebody wrote on the review, um, we love that new scene that Stacia added. And I was like, I didn't add a new scene. Basically, they cut the scene out of the script when they oh. made the movie. So I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> well, that's weird, but cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So what school did you go to? What school did I go to? Your college. Oh. Oh, nobody ever asks me that. I went to Scripps College in Claremont, California. It's a women's college, part of the Claremont Colleges, and I loved it there. And then I went to graduate school at Hebrew Union College, which was for a different career, which I don't do anymore. And then I went to um, a school called Western State University, which is in Gunnison, Colorado, for my master's in fine arts, which was a writing degree. 
So but we can all talk about scripts as long as you want because I work there. So <laughs> did you go for your first college for writing degree or you just went there to go for No, I actually did religious studies. So, uh, you know, a writer can be anything they want to be. You can study anything you want and turn out to be a writer in the end. So I was really interested in religion at the time and I had an amazing professor, Kathleen Wicker, who was my mentor and she was so unbelievable and um, that's what I chose to study. You should study the thing that you're most interested in when you're at college and it could be anything. Um, I mean, my oldest son studied English and he works in Hollywood, but it doesn't wow. have to connect. Like nothing has to connect. You could study business and be a writer. You could study science and be a writer. You could study. And don't forget, like we talked about that before, how everything informs what you write. Mm -hmm. So if you study biology and there's a character in your book who's a scientist. You know a lot about it. Exactly. To make it really realistic. You can make it really realistic. Yeah, exactly. And that's cool. Is there a favorite place where you like to write? So I have this really cool office that's so cute and I never ever go in there. I like to sit on the couch. And that's why my tushy always hurts and my back hurts and my whole body is turning into like a gremlin because I sit on the couch all day long, all day. There's a smoosh in the seat right where I sit. Yeah, not the smartest place. It was very comfortable. So comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I put a pillow on my lap and I put the laptop on a pillow. It is a really bad idea and anybody out there who is listening to this and wants to be a writer, don't do that. But that's how I go. Yeah. <laughs> and my office is dusty and nobody ever goes in there. <laughs> so, I don't know. So how did you start working with Simon and Schuster? So the one thing I always tell people who are writing is to make a lot of friends and meet a lot of people. And always, always, always tell them that you're writing a book. Always tell everybody that you want to be a writer and that you're writing a book. So I had just finished Blast to the Past, the first one, and I went to dinner and there was a woman at the table and I'm like, oh yeah, I just wrote a book, blah, blah, blah. I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had just written a book, like no. And she's like, oh, my nephew is an agent. An agent is somebody who helps sell the book. No, her nephew was not an agent. He placed speakers in like speaking places, like, you know, important people to go out and speak. Oh. And, but he, because he knew so many speakers, a lot of those people who give speeches have agents. So he liked my book and he sent it to a friend of his who was an agent. Oh, wow. And so that agent picked up my book, but we did it the other way too. Rhodey, who was my co-author, knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody whose sister was an editor at Simon & Schuster. And so we managed to connect them and they both really liked the project. So I say, tell the grocery store clerk that you're writing a book. Tell everybody that you're writing a book. You don't know whose sister, uncle, cousin, friend is in the book business. You so just don't know somebody. But exactly. You, don't know. you just don't know. Tell everybody. Do not be shy. Mm -hmm. What book of yours would you recommend? All of them. Well, it depends on what you're interested in. I mean, London, if you said to me, I really like adventure and I like history, I would say, I love Blast of the Past, go read those. And if you said, I really love books about friendship and I like computers and I think I might want to do computer coding, I would say, read the books that I wrote for Girls Who Code called The Friendship Code. Or if you told me I really, really, really love horses, I wrote seven books for the TV show Spirit Riding Free. So it totally depends on what you want to read, but I bet that I have written something for everybody. I love this so spirit. You do? I wrote seven books. It was actually super fun. What they would do is they would send me two episodes that hadn't come out yet, like before they came out. And then I would have to come up with something that happened in the middle. So like, I don't know, if Lucky was gonna go to boarding school, I might come up with a story about like why she wanted to go school or something something that happened in the middle and that was really fun and I wrote seven of those. Did you publish the episodes with it or just the middle? So the episodes go on TV and that's a whole different people uh -huh. so I just do the book so I only am doing I take their characters and I create a new story that happens in the middle and right now I'm doing that for Lego Ninjago too I don't know if anybody watches the Lego Ninjago webisodes but I've written six stories for things that happen in the middle Oh, wow. And you just have to guess and you just kind of are making it up and like, whatever. 
but I use their characters and their world and then I create new stories. But it helps that you know what happens before and after too. Yes, it totally helps that you know what happens before and after. And usually what I do is I'm working with an editor, somebody who is a professional in that world. And so I'll send them like 10 ideas. Like for Ninjago, I'll be like, maybe they get lost in the woods. Maybe they get lost on a mountain. Maybe a dragon eats their friend. Maybe a la la la. And I just send them like, that was a bad one. The dragon does not eat anybody in Ninjago. But, um, but I'll send them 10 ideas and they'll be like, oh, you know what? We really like number one and number seven. And then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to write a whole paragraph about those. So I'll make those bigger. And then they'll say like, okay, you know what? We really love number seven. Can you write that one? So especially when it's somebody else's like playground, I like to call it somebody else's sandbox. Mm -hmm. The people who wrote Spirit made the sandbox and I just get to play. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> to do that. It's super fun. It is so fun. So how do you become a New York Times bestseller? I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> so do you know, so New York Times bestseller is like an elite status for people who get really lucky and sell a lot of books. And I've been on the list three times, four times if you count a celebrity book that nobody knows, knows that I wrote. Wow. But it's like determined by a certain number of secret bookstores that sell books and then they determine what those books, what the best selling books that those secret bookstores are and people try to like game the system all the time. Like people try to buy their own books or just they hear that maybe that bookstore is the one this month that is going to be like the secret New York Times bestselling bookstore. And so they'll try and buy like a hundred of their own books over there or whatever. People try to game the system, but it is a total top secret system, but it is super amazing. And when you see your name in the newspaper, you feel like you like, it's amazing. Are like king of the universe. Yes. Yeah. It is so cool. It's really, really cool. Yeah. What is Simon and Schuster? It is a publishing house. So when you open your books at home, I want you to open to the first page and it will say the name of the publishing company that actually made the book. It could be Simon and Schuster, Scholastic, Little Brown, HarperCollins. These are big companies with lots of people. So I write the book at home and then I have somebody called an agent and the agent loves my book and she takes it to these publishing houses and she says, would you make a book for me? And either they like it or they don't and it fits with what they want to do or they don't. And then they like clean up the copy and make sure that you're have all your periods in the right place, that you didn't forget a word, that you didn't misspell something. I misspell things all the time. And then they take that and they'll hire an illustrator or an artist to do the artwork. I never ever hire an artist myself. And then they make a cover and then they send it to their publishing company, their printing press and they print copies. And then the next thing I see is when the books are printed and then they have a whole, have a whole team of people who help promote it. Like who make sure it gets into the bookstores and make sure that kids like you interview me about it mm -hmm. <laughs> and do all that kind of work. So I do, I do the writing and then I give it to my agent and then the rest just is like magic Shh, until a book comes out. The publishing company does all the work. And I worked for Simon & Schuster a very, very long time. I've probably written, I don't know, 50 books for them. Wow. But I've worked for other houses too. I've worked for almost every publishing company now, I think. I just have a new contract with Macmillan and that might be the last of the big ones. <laughs> so, I'm getting there. So, speaking of publishing books, do you have any new books coming out? I do. Um, what is coming out? So, I told you that I have six stories with Lego that are coming out. Sometimes I forget because you write a book almost a year ago because remember that publishing company that has to do all that work and get the artist and the illustrator and everything and get it all put together? It takes a year from the time that I give them my story to the time that I see it. And because I'm so busy, sometimes I forget what I have coming out. I will tell you that I just finished yesterday and I will still have some changes, but I'm working on a Barbie book. I know, right? That's so cool. Oh, uh, yeah. It's actually the first time they're calling me an editor. Like I am editing someone else's book, making it shorter, and then I am adding new words all about the movie to get it up to date. Oh, wow. So that's an interesting one, but it probably won't be out until May or June next year. Yeah. So don't hold your breath. That's very exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah. 
this sounds like a lot of fun to be working with such a big movie. It's so fun. But don't forget, I don't get invited to the premiere, right? I really just work for the book company. And not, but I want to be invited to the premiere. And I pretend like I'm like, part of the big movie. Whatever. How often do you write? Every day. Every single day. But I want to remind you that a lot of authors and a lot of people who want to write are writing and doing another job too, right? So maybe they work at a cafe all day and then at night they try and write their book. Or they go to school all day and at night they try to write their book or on weekends. It is only, this is the only thing I do. This is my job. So I get up at eight and I write until about three. I answer emails in the evening, but I really try to do my day from about eight to three, but it's every day, even on weekends. And if something comes back, like somebody sends me something and they're like, oh, we need your changes. I drop everything else and I just do that. So all the time, this is all I do. Yeah, so it makes it special for me. And what would you say to kids out there that love to write? The hardest part about writing is sitting in your chair. It is the hardest, hardest thing. There are so many other things that we want to do, right? You could go skateboarding, you could go to the park, you could go swimming, you could pet the dog, you could watch YouTube, you could do anything. But if you want to be a writer, you got to write. Somebody used to call it butt in chair, fingers on keys. You keep your tushy in the chair and your fingers on the keys. And even on days when you think, I have no ideas, no ideas at all, you just have to start with something. You can always change it. There's a delete key, right? And we talked about how many versions. You can always delete it. But some days, and some days, it's like the most painful thing on the planet. I will wander around the house and do everything I don't want to do. Dishes and laundry and polish shoes and clean up dog poo. I will do anything not to sit in my chair. But I will tell every kid out there, if you want to be a writer, you got to put your tushy in the chair. That is... That's what you got to do. And it's so hard sometimes. But you know what it's like once you start writing, like it's like your head like isn't even in your head anymore. And like you say, I'm going to work for five minutes. And then all of a sudden three hours are gone. And you're like, where did they go? And then you look down and you've got like six pages. And you're like, best day ever. Because <laughs> it's super fun. But sitting down is so hard. So, so hard. Yeah, I love to write stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I write every day. See? That's yeah. where it starts. Every day. I do something. I say sometimes I call it a writing thing every day. It doesn't always have to be writing. Sometimes I read. And that's a writing thing because it gives me ideas or it inspires me yeah. to do something else. Or maybe I watch a YouTube video or maybe I take a phone call and I talk to a friend about some, an idea I had, a jelly bean. Or I come and do this and I could say, okay, this interview was my writing thing today. So it doesn't have to be writing, but one writing thing every day I try to do. What is your most popular book? So the one I sold the most of was called Mean Ghouls and it was about a girl who had a disease that was turning her into a zombie. And the reason it was so popular is because it was in the Scholastic Book Fairs. So any author that gets their book in a Scholastic Book Fair can expect to get to sell a whole lot of copies. Now it wasn't on the New York Times bestseller list, right? Because it didn't go through those secret bookstores, but it sold a lot of books because Scholastic had it. Yeah. And you guys probably have Scholastic Book Fairs mm -hmm. in your school. So Lots you can walk around and look at those. Yes. And you can walk around and be like, that's a lucky writer, and that's a lucky writer, and that's a lucky writer when you walk through. My He's friend like, Josh. Yeah, my friend Josh Pruitt's greatest kids on earth book is now from the Plastic Book Fair, and he announced it. And I was like, Yay! Oh. You will sell so many copies, and so many kids will get to see your book because that's really like where kids see them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting us interview you today. You're welcome. I think that. Does London have one more question for me? Um, two. <gasps> two more questions? Okay, I'm Do excited. Do you have books about the same character? Yes, that is called a series, right? Yes. When a When a character goes on, I have lots of those. So Blast to the Past is a series. Well, Spirit, obviously. Riding Free is a series, because those are the same characters. Um, anything that's Lego is a series. Just Jesse is a series. Yeah, I have lots of series. Because that's also kind of the dream, 
is once you make up these characters and you know how hard it is to make up characters and to like get them in your head, you don't ever want to let them go. You want them to have lots and lots and lots of books and lots of stories. Because they come in like a part of your family. Yes, they you do. You keep writing about them. Yes. And it's just confusing that they don't exist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know what happens. And you've got one last question for me? Yes. Okay. What is your favorite character? In my own book or in other books? In all the books. In all of my books. Your favorite character from one of your books? Well, if I said something about Blast of the Past, I would have to pick one of my kids, and that would not be a good idea. Um, yikes. My favorite character in all my books? I don't even... We're going to end with me not knowing how to answer the question. Every time I sit down to write a book, I like love the characters. Okay, so in that Mean Ghouls, which a lot of people don't have now anymore because it was in this classic book fair like one time and then it was gone. But the, the kid who's turning into a zombie has a brother named Zach and he's super funny. And I always like to write funny. Sometimes when I do write silly and funny, people are like, okay, too much, Daisha. Ooh, pull it back. Not so goofy. But um, he's a goofy character, and I like to write a silly character. So that might be my favorite character. Is that a good answer? Yes. Yes, that'd be good. Okay. Well, Phew. thank you so much for letting us interview you today. You're welcome. This was so much fun. Thank you for asking me hard questions that I had to think a little bit about. I really appreciate it. And all the kids who are listening, I hope that you sit in your chair and get some good writing done. <laughs>